Hey guys, how are you going? In this video, I'll be showing you the basics of error handling in JavaScript. So, um, if you're new to JavaScript or you're not too sure how to handle errors, this video is definitely going to be for you. So, when I say error handling, I'm referring to the ability to recover from unexpected situations, aka errors. So, obviously, when coding, there are definitely going to be situations where you get errors. So, you're going to want to know how to actually handle those situations and then move forward. So, in this video, I'll be showing you a very simple example of an error and then how to handle that error. So, on this web page right here, we can see we get a basic blue box. So let's look at the HTML which makes up uh, this page. As we can see here in the HTML we get a div with an ID of my box and a class of box and this right here is the blue box which we saw earlier. In the CSS we're simply setting a width and height and a solid black border and inside the JavaScript we've declared a function called change background color which expects an element and a color and this function simply changes the background color of the element to be the one that you pass in. So very, very straightforward function and then down here we are simply retrieving the element with an ID of my box and assigning it to this constant right here. We are then passing the box into the change background color function and also passing through blue. Then down here, we are prompting the user and we are saying, what is your name? So now, I might just refresh the page here and we can see, of course, we get the prompt. I'll type in DOM and press enter. So that is how we get to this situation where we have a blue box. Okay, so now let's modify this code in order to uh, create an error or an unexpected situation. So back inside here, let's change the HTML and let's change the ID of this box to be my box and then one. So now the code is going to run and it's going to try and get an element with the ID of my box, but this time it is not going to be found. So now my box is going to refer to null. We are then passing through null into this function, which of course is going to uh, cause an error because we cannot change the, uh, the background color of null. We can't say null.style.backgroundColor. So let's save this here and then refresh the browser. As we can see now, we get of course in the console, uncaught type error, cannot read property style of null as we expected. Okay, so the reason why it says uncaught is because we have not handled the error. So uh, JavaScript simply just logs to the console in this situation. And of course also right here, uh, the background color did not change for the div, um, but also if I refresh here, we can see that I didn't get a prompt to say what is your name. And the reason why that prompt did not occur um, or show is because of course down here, um, before we could actually reach this line of code, the code above it has thrown an error. So of course we don't get to reach this line and that is why the prompt did not show. So, in this situation, um, we don't want to end uh, the execution of the whole application simply because we couldn't find that element. Okay, so of course, we want to be able to handle that error and then continue on and actually show that prompt message. Okay, so um, to handle the error, let's go back inside here and we're going to be wrapping the change background color function call inside what's known as a try catch block. So down here, let's type out try just like this and then put curly braces to create a block. Then down here, we're going to say catch, then use parentheses and we're going to put E inside there. Once again, we're going to use blocks to separate that out. So now let's put the change background color call inside the try section. Okay, so basically this right here is now, um, uh, or this is how you handle errors in JavaScript through a try catch block. So now in this situation uh, inside the try, this is where you specify the code um, that you think may throw an error. In this case, of course, it is the change background color function. Okay, so this is going to run just as normal as if we didn't even have the try catch block there. 
And then inside here, inside the catch section, this is where uh, we get to write code which will handle the situation above which has thrown that error. So I might just leave this section blank for now and we'll get uh, and we'll get more into it a bit later on. But I do want to save this here and then refresh the browser. And now we can see we get the prompt once again. I'll type in DOM and press OK. And now of course, uh, once again, we don't have the background color change, but also in the console, we no longer see the error. And the reason for that is because we have now handled that error. Therefore, it does not go inside the console. So obviously, the main advantage here is that the code below the error has uh, not been affected. And of course, we still get the prompt, which is good. Um, so that's basically how to handle errors. So inside the catch, this is where you actually write code to do something when the error has occurred. So inside here, I might just say just for now, console.log and then pass through E. So E right here, this E um, refers to typically uh, the error object. So this object contains information about the error. So I might just save this here and then refresh. And we can see here we get a type error, cannot read properties style of null, basically the same thing which we saw earlier. But I do want to go back inside here and just change this log to be dir. And this will give more information about the object. I'll save this and refresh. And now we can see we can expand this and we get stack as a property, we get message and we get down here the name. So name basically refers to uh, the type of the error. Okay, so things like syntax error, things like that. Um, then we get a message, so a bit more information about the error. And then of course the stack right here, which contains a lot more information about the error. Okay, so uh, typically you don't want to log to the console. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but you may simply want to show an error, um, an, uh, an error message to the user. So for example, I want to say, you know, alert something went wrong, for example, you know, sorry about that, something along those lines, if you feel you need to. Um, let's say this and refresh, and of course now we get the alert, something went wrong, sorry about that. Okay, and then of course moving forward. So um, inside here, you may want to do something like that, or you may also want to simply log to an error handler, or you may want to do something else along those lines. But basically, this is where you put code to handle your error. But I do also now want to move on um, to the last section here, and that is going to be the finally block. So below the try catch, we can also specify finally. Okay, and inside here, we basically get the ability to write code, which is always going to run no matter what happens. So for example, if I was to say console.log 20, let's save this here and then refresh, we get 20 in the console, even in the case of an error. Okay, and also if I was to go back inside here, and set the ID to be simply just my box, save this and refresh, we now get uh, once again 20. So uh, even though um, uh, the error did not occur, we still get 20 in the console. This basically is gonna run every single time, error or no error. It's also worth mentioning that we no longer get the alert because of course no error has occurred, therefore there is nothing to catch. So that right there is the basics of error handling in JavaScript. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.